All right, well, this is different, isn't it? <laughs> Hello guys, how are you getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly and welcome back to another episode of the Premier League Verdict Live from a car. I want to get this video out for 6pm on Tuesday, so gotta do what you gotta do, you know what I mean? So we are now six weeks into the new Premier League season and once again we have our graphic up including our green, our yellow and our red box. And for the first time this season, I gave my audience a little bit of an input into who should get what, what box this week and we will touch on what people have said uh, on the Instagram poll. But first, before we get into anything, if you aren't subscribed to the Aaron Kelly channel already, I'd love to ask you to do so. We're trying to hit 500 subs before the end of 2021. We're not too far away. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. We're gonna start off as usual with our green box. And of course, there was a lot of input on my Instagram story. There were people calling for Mikel Antonio to get the green box. Obviously he's back from his suspension, scored a last minute winner against Leeds United in a, a massive win for West Ham. I heard people also call for Manchester City, obviously a massive win over Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, which we will talk about obviously from the Chelsea perspective we can't not talk about it, do you know what I mean? But I've actually given the green box this week to Arsenal. A massive win in the North London Derby. North London Derby is basically the cup final that comes around twice every year, sometimes even more if they actually meet in a cup competition. Arsenal won it and won it comprehensively. Obviously, I was very critical of Tottenham last week, as were uh, a lot of people really after their capitulation against Chelsea in that second half. But there was just nothing to be cheerful about about the Tottenham performance at the weekend against Arsenal and second half performance improved a little bit for them but by that stage the game was already won for Arsenal goals from Smith Rowe Aubameyang and Saka giving Arsenal a 3-0 lead Hyun Min Son did pull one back for Spurs in the second half 3-1 is how it finished but I was so so impressed with the way Arsenal played and I'm not going to say they've turned a the corner because they could easily go and lose to Brighton next week like that's just the way Arsenal season has gone so far. What impressed me the most was not only the amount of goals they were scoring, but like the, the, the brand of football they were playing was genuinely so, so entertaining. Like it was unbelievable to watch. I think that second goal, the Aubameyang goal, really did um, personify that for me. The way they broke through the lines, played through Spurs' press, accurate passes, lovely touch from Aubameyang initially into Smith Rowe. He gets the pull back again and it's a really, really good finish by Aubameyang. And to think now Arsenal and Spurs' pass have completely crossed because Arsenal obviously lost their first three games, have won all three games since. Spurs won their first three games and have lost all three games since and have actually conceded three goals in the last three games they've, uh, you know, lost. Nine goals conceded in three games. Like for a Nuno, man, or a manager in Nuno who is a defensive-minded coach. That's that's not a good look for Tottenham and it doesn't look like getting any better for them anytime soon. I'm not going to put them in the stinker box for this week. I'm going to give the green box to Arsenal and their performance and the brand of football they've played. Have they turned a corner? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Moving on to our yellow box, the shock wow factor for the week. Easily could have gone to this game as well, but I am going to give it to the game that took place between Brentford and Liverpool. What a game this was. 3-3 it's how it finished out. An arguably game of the season so far. And Brentford, as they showed against Arsenal, will really raise their game when the big six or the big boys come to town because they were absolutely excellent against Liverpool. Defence, nowhere to be seen, admittedly, but Liverpool will have seen this as a an opportunity missed. Obviously, Chelsea lost, Man United lost earlier on in the day. We'll get on to them in a minute, but this is a big chance for Liverpool, even this early on in the season, to open up a decent gap um, against a newly promoted side like Brentford. But Brentford didn't see it that way. They did not roll over at all. They were there fighting for every single ball. Their tempo was high. The crowd was behind them. And I think that's going to be a massive factor for Brentford this season in, in keeping them in the Premier League is when they have their home games. Like that, that home crowd is absolutely brilliant. Thomas Frank is absolutely wonderful as well. But to show that character against one of the best sides in the division in Liverpool, obviously they went behind on two separate occasions, didn't they? They went 2-1 down, then they went 3-2 down. It was absolutely great. It was a great watch. It was a great watch. And I have to say, it kind of symbolises the, the kind of tempo and quality of games we have been getting from the Premier League this season like it's been so enjoyable to watch as I said I think in my match week one verdict I think a lot of it is actually down to 
the fact that the fans are back in the stadiums and making their voices heard and pushing the teams on the 12th man in a way Brentford were, were absolutely excellent and Liverpool had to fight really hard for the point in the end obviously Ivan Tony got a goal towards the end which was uh, ruled out for offside rightfully so but and you know I, I really am getting Leeds United from last season vibes from Brentford like they've come up to this new division they're playing this really dynamic exciting style of football and they don't fear anyone and that is the biggest asset they have going for them this team looks absolutely fearless let's move on to our stinker of the week then and i've alluded to it so far and we will get into chelsea chelsea aren't the stinker of the week i thought i was going to end up giving it to them but then bruno fernandez happened it kind of feels weird putting bruno fernandez in a stinker box because he is such a good good player but that penalty that penalty lads holy shit obviously Manchester United played Aston Villa at Old Trafford uh, in the second early game on Saturday afternoon and Aston Villa looked to have won it Courtney Hall's header with only a few minutes to go but then United win a penalty I think again it was Courtney Hall's with the handball via the touch from Cavani United penalty and when you've got Bruno Fernandes and Cristiano Ronaldo two absolute penalty merchants I'm not saying that's all <laughs> they're good at obviously but they are penalty merchants Ronaldo and uh, Bruno Fernandes you would put your absolute house on Manchester United scoring a penalty and I don't think they've had a penalty this season and I think there was always going to be the questions was, oh, if slash when Man United get a penalty who's going to take it because Ronaldo everywhere he goes he takes everything Bruno Fernandes has such a good track record uh, from the penalty spot for Manchester United so it was going to be intriguing Bruno Fernandes took it and absolutely skied it into the Stratford end and arguably could have even landed in my back garden to be kind of awkward I haven't been out in the back garden this week but it could be there when I go home after college today one thing that I will mention there's been a lot of conspiracy theories going around about this penalty for Manchester United and I want to know what your guys thoughts on this because we've seen an incident and it's doing the rounds on TikTok and Twitter and whatever at the minute of Steven Gerrard seemingly missing a penalty on purpose for Liverpool during uh, Roy Hodgson's reign at the club back in around like, the 2010 uh, era when Liverpool were really at their banter stage Hodgson was then sacked in the the next game a lot of people genuinely think Bruno Fernandes missed that penalty on purpose to try and get Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, sacked I personally don't think this is the case I know he changes technique and Bruno very rarely goes high but when he's coming out and apologizing on Twitter for missing a penalty which by the way United always and all he's not dead he's not dead uh, it's nearly as petty as football TikTok this whole kerfuffle to be quite honest it's so just cringe at this point like why are they doing this he's missed a penalty whatever it's disappointing it's a game it's a league game against Aston Villa again it, it'd be one thing if he missed a penalty in say a Champions League final if Manchester United were to get there no he's missed it in a league game against Aston Villa like people just need to relax Bruno himself needs to relax for that kind of penalty and the fact that it cost Manchester United a point which they probably didn't deserve in the game overall uh, it's a stinker for Bruno Fernandes for me. I'll briefly touch on Chelsea um, because, you know, I'm a Chelsea fan and even when Chelsea aren't involved in the boxes, I still have to touch on them. Obviously, first defeat of the season against Manchester City on Saturday, a 1-0 defeat at Stamford Bridge. Gabriel Jesus with the second half goal and Manchester City clawing back a little bit of a revenge after the Champions League final. And uh, I will be referring to the Champions League final a little bit in my analysis of this now because, you know, that's the benchmark of how you beat Manchester City when you look at Chelsea's Champions League final win. And for some reason, Chelsea just didn't play like they did in Porto. And I, I, I don't know what the, the problem was. Like, it was 1-0 to Manchester City and it could have been more, particularly in that second half, only for Edouard Mendy, keeping out some really, really great chances. Jack Grealish had a great chance at one stage. Like, I have to ask the logic why we played like that and you know it comes down to Thomas Tuchel obviously and he's gone with the two strikers Werner and Lukaku and I actually think that was the best choice I think Mason Mount hasn't been playing the best but if you look at Chelsea's performance we kind of missed Mount's energy and his running in the middle of the park because Chelsea lost the midfield battle absolutely like you've seen the difference when say Ruben Loftus-Cheek comes on to replace I think it was Kante or Jorginho he did better than both Kante and Jorginho did in, in their whole time on the pitch and it was just so disappointing like I had no complaints about the result like I think as I said 1-0 probably flattered Chelsea in the end but I hope and I do think it's just a blip along the road I don't think this is anything to be panicking about like some Chelsea fans seem to be and it what is encouraging for me is Thomas Tuchel did acknowledge in his post-match press conference like he's not delusional he did acknowledge that maybe he did get the approach wrong and I think he did um, I think a squad as talented as Chelsea's there's absolutely no need for us to sit back against 
the Manchester Cities and Liverpools of this world. Yes, we did so against Liverpool at Anfield because we had 10 men. But like prior to that, Chelsea were playing some really, really nice football at Anfield. Why didn't we do it against Manchester City? I think it's just uh, fair to say that we gave them far too much respect. As good as Chelsea are defensively, it's very hard to hold out for a 90 minute game against Manchester City and expect to not concede because uh, more often than not, they're going to create chances and more often than not, they're going to be clinical enough to finish them as well. So I think hopefully a lesson learned for Chelsea, the best thing possible now to do. We have an international break after this weekend's fixtures, Chelsea play, uh, I think at home again to Southampton. So obviously before that is the Champions League game on Wednesday tomorrow against um, Juventus. So the best way Chelsea can respond, go out, put on a good performance in both games and get three points in both games but that is what i'm going to wrap this video up on for this week as i say as usual if you disagree with any of my choices for the boxes let me know in the comments section down below make sure you slap a like on the video subscribe if you are new with your notifications on and i will catch you later I've been trying to find a way